Hey, I'm Christopher and welcome to Made by Chance. So I have family coming into town for the holidays in only three days and I really want to try to make a cutting board for my mom before she gets here. So I'm going to use some scrap pieces of walnut that I still had from some other projects and some really cool ingrained pecan and see if I can knock out a cutting board in three days so it's ready for her when she gets here. All right, time's a ticking, so let's get this show on the road. The first thing I did was start off by cutting down some of this pecan board uh, to some more manageable pieces to get through the planer. First of all, I didn't need this whole thing, but second of all, you can see that this board has some serious warp to it. So just getting some smaller pieces to run through the planer will help out. Because these boards are pretty warped, I went ahead and used my planer sled to give them a good uh, reference surface to make them really nice and flat. So I went ahead and shimmed them up to where they didn't rock anymore on this uh, makeshift sled made out of OSB, and then I ran them through my planer. Once I got a good flat side on these pieces of pecan, I could then take it off the planing jig and then lay it on the flat side and plane the other side down to smooth. All right, so I finished planting these and look how beautiful that wood looks. So what I'm gonna do though for the cutting board, rather than using this face you see, I'm actually gonna use the edge grain and I should be able to get this same pattern in all of this edge grain, um, but I'm doing that be, to be able to conserve this wood more and not have to plane so much of it. Pecan's really hard, it's like hickory, so it's just really tearing up the blades on my planer if I keep trying to plane this down further. So because I'm gonna use this edge grain of these boards as what's actually gonna be up facing you whenever you're looking at the cutting board, and these pieces of walnut are gonna be in between some of these pieces, I need to cut strips of this pecan about as thick as this walnut is. You have a board that you know does not have a straight edge, you can make a joining jig for the table saw and actually joint the edge of the board um, by using a um, relevant flat surface to actually make the, the board you want a straight edge on to be straight. But if you don't have that jig, what you can do is take something that you know is straight. So I have this piece of melanine that I'll just line up along the edge, just let it naturally touch it, and everywhere is touching except right here. And if I zoom in, you can definitely see that uh, gap. And so what I'll do is similar to, similarly to how I planed the board, is I'll just take a thin piece of wood or some sort of shim, put it in there, hold it tight, and then put a little hot glue between the two to hold it together. And then I'll let that dry, and now I have a straight surface over here that I can run against my fence on the table saw, and it'll cut a very thin strip here that'll be perfectly straight, and I can run the board through by itself. All right, it's the next day. These have been in the clamps for about 16 hours or so. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and take them out of the clamps and trim this the ends up. And then I'm gonna insert two vertical strips of walnut in this. Um, yeah, so let's get to it. So now I'm gonna come in from the outside edges to a symmetrical distance and I've picked about seven inches and I'm gonna make a cut all the way across and that's where these are gonna be inserted. So now I'm gonna go glue that up and let it dry till tomorrow and then we'll finish it. It was 
time to send it through the planer a final time to get everything perfectly flat and then square all the edges up on the table saw. Now you could be done here and have a perfectly good cutting board, however I wanted to go ahead and add a juice groove all around the perimeter of this board. I know this is a lot of extra work added, but I think it was going to be worth it in the end. I think I could still slip it in the last day. To make this juice groove I just used a trim router with a round nose bit and I placed the groove about one inch from the outside perimeter of the entire cutting board. And I just used a piece of scrap wood to kind of help as a guide to make sure I didn't cut too far into the board. But other than that, I just kind of used my hand to be able to stop myself before I got too close to the edges. I then swapped out the round nose bit for a round over bit and I gave all the sharp edges a nice little break. After getting it all sanded down with 150 grit sandpaper, including getting that juice groove by hand, I went ahead and finished it with some Rubio Mono Coat to really bring out all those colors and make that grain pop. Now I have less than one day before my mother arrives and I need to get this wrapped under the tree. And Rubio Mono Coat takes about two to six days to completely cure. But I don't have that sort of time, so I at least gave it all night to dry, and then I would go ahead and wrap it and get it under the tree. Alright, so we basically got it done. The only thing I haven't done is put some rubberized feet on it and it's mostly because I'm actually not sure if my mom would rather it without the feet or with it. Um, so I'm just going to package them with it, but family's going to be here in about an hour, so I'm going to go ahead and get this thing wrapped and under the tree. 